Of course, now that we know what the T curves are, we're going to have to be able to find the critical T values that we need in order to be able to do the confidence interval piece. So we need to be able to find that plus or minus T alpha over two. And if you're thinking, wow, that picture looks really familiar, yes, it does. That's because T curves look like Z curves unless you put them side by side and you can see the Z curve is taller, right? So this is a T curve for our purposes. And how we're going to find them, well, inverse T and the T table, and then of course, we'll also be able to use stat crunch as well. And we'll see how to use stat crunch for it. But other than that, it's very similar to what we did for Z alpha over two. So we're gonna determine the critical T values for these particular problems and that will hopefully help us figure everything out. All right, so remember that the center portion is your confidence level. So if I have a negative T alpha over two right here, which is that vertical bar, and then positive T alpha over two over here, the confidence level is in the middle. So this would be 0.95 in the center. And then the area in the tails is of particular interest to me because I need to find what it is. It should be alpha over two. All right, well, I first need to find alpha. Alpha is the complement of our confidence level. So alpha is one minus the C level, which is one minus 0.95, which is 0.05. So there's alpha. But you'll see right in there, it says to use alpha divided by two. It's right in as part of the critical value labeling. So we need alpha over two because alpha is both tails put together. I need to know what each tail is on its own. So alpha divided by two would be 0 0.05 divided by two, which would be 0 0.025. So that's this piece right here and this piece right here. All right, now I have everything shaded and labeled, right? It asks me to shade and label, and I did. So I would get full credit for that shading and labeling. And you only have to do it if it's asked for, but it, but it was in this case. So now I wanna find those values. If I use a calculator, I will, I will show the instructions for the TI-84, but if you don't have a calculator, you don't have to follow these instructions. And then I'll also show stat crunch and the table. So just like with the Z alpha over twos, there's several ways to come up with these. Let me begin with stat crunch, I guess. So if I'm in stat crunch, I would go to stat, I would choose calculators, and then see the letter T almost at the very bottom? You click on that. And there you have it. So there's a T curve, and I would click between, and then my degrees of freedom. So that'll be very important. You'll have to put that in every time. So did we write that down? Oh, we did not. Let's go back. Very important piece. If n is 17, degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So that would be 16. All right, 17 take away 1. So I would go back to my stat crunch and tell it the degrees of freedom is 16. And then I'm going to go put in the number for the area for the middle, which would be 0.95, enter. And there we have it, negative 2.12 and positive 2.12. So I actually know the answers right now. <laughs> plus or minus T alpha over two is plus or minus 2.12, zero, right? Because if we rounded to the third decimal place, the 99 would round up. All right, so that's the calculator, or excuse me, that's stat crunch. Let me show you the calculator. The calculator is a little bit more finicky. So if I grab the calculator, I would choose inverse T and it's, it's going to do left tail area by default, just like inverse um, norm does. So you'd put 0 0.025, you type in your degrees of freedom and paste and press enter. And there you have it, same number. So if you're going to use the calculator, which again is not required, it's just if you want to, it would be inverse T you put in the alpha over two, which is the 0 0.025, and then you put in the degrees of freedom, which is 16, and that will work. It's automatically a left tail area. You have one more option available to you, which is the table. Now the table is not going to always work because there are a lot of values that are not included in the table, but a lot of the ones we're going to use are. 
So alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. So this is my column. And I go down until I get to 16 for my degrees of freedom. And there it is, 2.120. So whatever way you want to do it. If you want to use the table, that's fine. If you want to use inverse T, that's fine. Stack crunch, you actually have to choose. One more time, I'll show you. We chose stat, calculators, T, right? So that's what you would choose. All right, let's do it again one more time. So if alpha is 0 0.005, okay, well, first of all, that means that alpha over 2 is 0 0.005 divided by 2, which would be 0 0.0025, which again means I'm shading a very small amount here at the edge. So this little bit right here is alpha over 2, which is 0 0.0025. And so is this little bit over here. Alpha over 2 is 0 0.0025. The center is my confidence level. So remember that your confidence level, which it asks you for, it asks for the confidence level, would be the complement of your critical value. So it would be 1 minus your alpha, which would be 1 minus 0 0.005 which would be 0.995 or 99.5%. That's your confidence level, right? which is one of the questions that was asked. This particular one asked two questions. All right, so then I just need the critical value. And you can find it any which way you like. Right? Find, it, find it however makes you happy. OK, so I'll use StatCrunch first. Because stack crunch is so easy. Oh, one other thing. I will need a degrees of freedom before I go off on my merry way. I'm going to need degrees of freedom, which is 35, take away 1, which is 34. So that's my degrees of freedom. Because stack crunch is going to ask for me for that first thing. So let's see here. Between is fine. Change this to 34. And change the area to 0 0.995. Enter. And there we have it. Plus or minus t alpha over 2 is plus or minus 3.002. If I use the calculator to get that same bit, I would do inverse t, so second distribution, inverse t, and I would change this to 0 0.0025 and make it 34. Because you have to use alpha over 2 and then your degrees of freedom, and it comes up with the same answer, as does the table because 0 0.0025 is right here, and then 34 row is right there, and it's 3.002. Now the table doesn't have all of them, so if you have one that the table won't do, then you'll have to use stack crunch, <laughs> right? Or the calculator. So if you have the calculator, you can use the calculator. Um, me personally, I would use stack crunch. I think stack crunch is easier for these, but that's just my opinion, <laughs> right? So this is 0 0.0025 and then 34, like that. Again, you only have to write that if you're doing it that way. Um, and honestly, not even then, but it's your, it's your choice. Um, so, because there are so many ways you can do these without showing any work, stat crunch or your table. Oh, I would lose points actually on this problem because I never put in the symbols. So I should put those in and label them. There we go, that would get me full credit. <laughs> 